to clean up at Saltivka in the city of Kharkiv, a neighborhood that was once staring into the abyss. After weeks of bombardment, Ukrainian forces successfully resisted a Russian advance on the city. In the distance, still the rumble of artillery fire. Up close, the anguish of residents like Lubov. No. In April, after failing to take Kharkiv and the capital, Kyiv, the Kremlin announced a, quote, second phase of its war, taking the south of the country and extending its control to all of the Donbass. It is here now that the might of the Russian army appears to be concentrating. Their ambition to take the country out of focus, so Donbass, now dead center, of the crosshairs. The Donbass is made up of two oblasts, Donetsk and Luhansk. Russian proxy forces held parts of the area since 2014, but now their grip is tightening. Luhansk is almost entirely under Russian control now. As we speak, intense fighting is taking place in towns and cities like Severa Donetsk, Lyman and Bakhmut. The Ukrainians fear that these places are set to become the new Mariupols. Yesterday, President Zelensky said that Russian attacks had turned the Donbass into hell. Today, he spoke of diplomacy as the only way out. The questions now. If the Russians take all of the Donbass, what shape will the counter-offensive take, which the Ukrainians said would start in June? Will the aims of that counter-offensive extend to taking back the parts of the region lost in 2014? As eyes turn to the Donbass, so does Western military support. West of Kyiv today, the Russians said they destroyed a large consignment of Western weaponry en route to Donbass. And more is en route. Much more. Today in South Korea, President Biden signed a $40 billion aid bill, including more military support. The British Foreign Secretary said she wants to see Ukraine's neighbor, Moldova's defenses, brought up to NATO standards. Back at Saltivka, we find a destroyed apartment that we know. At the very beginning of the war, we met a young girl who'd fled Kharkiv and was writing up her war diary every day. We know this neighborhood quite well, actually. You may remember we followed a 12-year-old and her grandmother out of Kharkiv to Ireland at the beginning of the war. This is her block, and that's their apartment on the fifth floor. So last word to Yeva and the first entry in her diary. Когда были обычные дни, солнечные дни, для меня это не было удивительно. Мирное небо для меня не новость. Когда уже говорили о детях, которые были участниками военных действий, как это было страшно, я не понимала. Но сейчас уже все изменилось. Я это понимала хорошо, с чувством более страха. 